Thank you. Sarah Gundy. Thank you as well for inviting me to speak today, and thanks a lot to Tim, my friend. <laughs> um, we're kind of going, like you say, at the other end of the scale and looking at what's happening, happening very locally. Um, and myself and my colleague Gary have just started um, a project called Free Champions, which is running across uh, Wiltshire and Swindon. So I'm just to put some pieces up. Um, so basically, we're looking at. Um, we're working until March 2014 and we're looking at establishing what we're calling growing sites um, across Wiltshire and Swindon and also um, either the establishment or the regeneration of community orchards. Um, we're, it's a bit mad for this next bit, but we're funded through the Big Lottery's local food scheme. So that's kind of a five-year programme um, all across the country um, looking at different ways of um, producing more local food. So, and lots of our match funding with lotteries come through the housing associations and it's mainly their kind of residents that we're working with in a lot of our schemes, particularly on the growing sites. Um, they'd be able to give us access to land, um, which is quite difficult sometimes, so we're grateful for them. Um, and I'm going to whiz through it quickly because we've only got 10 minutes. Um, but basically, this is just to show you kind of the various sites that we've got across Wiltshire and Swindon. Um, so, Four. Four, yeah. So we've got about four sites each this year that um, we're working on, um, and then next year we've got another phase to go to as well. That's it quickly, um, and basically it's working within communities to establish these growing sites. So instead of having um, allotments or um, community supported agricultural type environment, which generally people have to go out to, we're trying to bring the food growing um, basically to their front door trying to kind of up the engagement with um, some of the people as well. So the funding has enabled us to set up the, each site um, and give people various equipment, and tools, seeds, that kind of thing. And then they also get a regular um, gardening club throughout the season um, from both Gary and myself, um, sort of teaching them basic horticultural skills, looking at how to grow compost, that kind of thing. Um, and we also... Um, once stuff's grown, which is a bit slow so far this year, <laughs> um, we'll be running kind of healthy eating and cookery clubs as well, just to get people experienced um, in, in using their produce as well. And we've got launch events and harvest celebrations as well on each of these sites to try and get the community together um, and get a sense of atmosphere. So, um, my, one of my sites is in Swindon for this current year, and I don't know if you know, but it's um, Underwood House, which is run by Swindon Borough Council, um, and that's the middle of their courtyard. It's in Stratton St Margaret, and it's about 22 residential units for um, well, temporary accommodation for families that are homeless. Um, it's a short-term kind of accommodation for people moving to more long-term accommodation, and it's a very strangely configured site, having to go through lots of different doors, but this just shows you um, around the, the grounds as it were. Um, this is what we were doing yesterday, I think it was. Um, so that's trying to actually get some growing space in a very um, paved area, which is subject to flooding, um, what has been for the last few weeks. Um, so yeah, we're just trying to maximise as many different places on that site where we can grow fruit, vegetables and flowers and being led by the residents on where they would like those bits and pieces um, to be installed. That's the physical infrastructure. And then over the last two months we've been running kind of gardening clubs. So like I said, there are about 20 families um, on the scheme. Um, and we go out every Wednesday, um, so we've been making up potting up seeds, um, doing herb towers, that kind of thing. And there's just kind of lots of enthusiasm. It's quite hectic, <laughs> as Gary will attest. Um, and yeah, everyone's really enthusiastic and really motivated to kind of join in. And they're really, really keen on just involving their kids um, and being able to grow stuff and take a bit of ownership of, of the sort of flats and the houses that they live in. It's a bit difficult kind of being that short-term accommodation as well. I'm not quite sure, uh, or people aren't quite sure when they're going to be moved on. That. Um, just another quick one, this is in Bradford on Avon, we don't like easy sites, um, that's 
I'm quite asleep. Um, so we've got some more raised beds going in. Um, this is again a supported housing scheme um, with cell which sets for people with mental health difficulties. Um, so they're living in a supported housing unit and we run a regular Friday club for gardening in that place. So that's one of my colleagues assembling the raised uh, beds. Uh, we have seven tons of soil. We've got 22 tons of soil going to Swindon next week, so that should be uh, even more fun. Um, and that's just some pictures basically to show you what we're doing. And then tea. Apparently, tea is very good for uh, bonding everyone. So, yeah, that's a regular Friday group. Um, and again, very led by the residents and what type of fruit and vegetables they want to grow. Um, it's kind of very therapeutic in a sense, and I think lots of the projects, it's up front, it's been much more about the bonding and the regularity of getting out into the, the outdoors, even in this rain. Um, the Are you in swimming? Because there's no rain at all. <laughs> 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 not in that one, no. I think she's not here. <laughs> this is sunlight on all these photos. <laughs> Yeah, the camera gets a bit too wet. <laughs> so that's that one. Um, and then we also work with some of the children centres across uh, Wiltshire and Swindon as well. So Gary runs um, a dad's uh, gardening group every month in devices. So there we've got an allotment. Again, very led by the, um, the participants. So they come out with their kids. Um, they go up at other times, don't they? Yeah, they it's just a fortnightly group. Yeah. So yeah. And like I say, there's so much enthusiasm and energy, um, it's quite hard to kind of keep on top of it sometimes and know what to do with um, people. But yeah, brilliant. So that's Gary's daughter Daisy helping out. Um, and then more food, because obviously it wasn't me. Um, and we're also trying to get involved with other kind of community events around growing. So we've been helping to run some seed swaps around Wiltshire um, and supporting other groups as well who are running the seed swaps. So, uh, for example, that bottom left one's down in Caution and they've done it at the um, seed swap and farms from up in the store. And again, so much enthusiasm and energy. You get hundreds of people kind of turning up. If you've ever been to a seed swap, hundreds of people kind of turning up. And lots of volunteers kind of giving their advice as well. Lots of people with growing kind of a bit new to it, don't necessarily know what they're doing. Lots of people feel quite kind of scared about planting things. I don't know why, but they do. But, um, so it's just brilliant, that kind of community engagement and being able to share knowledge. <coughs> I'm whizzing through this really quickly. Um, so then we're also working to establish, like I said, or regenerate community orchards across Wiltshire and Swindon. Um, part of the project is to help reinstate some of the Wiltshire traditional apple varieties. Um, I think there might be another one. There's no levels, but we don't want any. No, yeah. <laughs> um, so some of these um, at the moment are being... Um, stopped by the Bogdale, um, but for example, Wiltshire Monster, I think, is a newer dis well, discovered apple variety. So, with um, again, with these orchards, we've um, gone through quite a long process of identifying orchards, getting various bits of paperwork back, and we'll be supplying them with trees. We'll be teaching people how to grow their own fruit trees as well, um, and also teaching people how to regenerate them as well. So around Swindon, we've got these five orchards. Um, so in and around Swindon. So the end is for you, and it's got on Stanton Country Park, but that's new as well. Um, and some of them are regenerated. So for example, the um, orchard down in Womba, um, that's, I think, it's some plumbing trees um, that are in there as well. So we're trying to get community groups up and running, knowing that there's fruit there, getting them skilled up to learn how to manage those trees in the future as well. And we were at Scandal Day last year uh, with their short farm here and they're hoping to run a whole weekend um, this year as well, the Apple Day. So again, having points of interest for the community to come along and get engaged and engaging people, like Andrew was saying earlier, that might not traditionally come to some of, of events. And we found that a lot with the seed swaps as well. They might not normally come to a traditional kind of climate event, but they've quite been interested in the food growing plant side of things. Um, so again, 
this is how we're supporting all the orchards. Um, so we've um, got an expert who's helping to teach people about winter and um, summer pruning techniques. We'll be looking how to graft. Um, another part of the project hopefully is trying to identify with some of the regenerated orchards. They don't know what varieties of trees are in their orchards, so we we'll potentially hope to discover some more varieties of orchard apples, some new ones. But again, that sort of costs money to get those, um, those identified. Um, and then we're going to places like Orchard Pig Down in Somerset, sort of seeing how they run their scheme, giving people ideas about how they can manage the harvest um, and what they want to do with these apples. So another good apple year this year as well. Um, and then, so this is um, a site down near Devizes in a place called Roud at South Unlimited, which is a supported housing scheme. Um, and over the years, they've had um, a lot of trees planted, but because of the way funding and the support work has changed, um, it means they haven't been able to manage that in a has effective way. Um, so again, it's trying to engage the community around that area to get involved with the orchard, but it also provides us with a fantastic train menu, because they've got a couple of hundred apple trees on there, I think. So it's, it's been a good kind of uh, relationship, beneficial relationship. Um, so this was our first orchard pruning um, session back in March, I think it was. Um, so we had a guest lecturer called Richard Cripps who came and um, spoke to sort of representatives from various community orchards, obviously in theory, um, and then being hands-on. So it looks quite severe, <laughs> but it's really, it was just so brilliant to be actually go out on, in the field and practice those techniques and put in to action all that learning and the theory. And as Richard kind of rightly said, everyone was kind of very nervous and very gingerly kind of sawing off tiny little branches and then all of a sudden you get stuck in and, you know, take them back to produce a, a nice shape because traditionally you're supposed to be able to throw your hat through the crown of a tree. Um, so that's the air circulate. And obviously you also want to prune so you can stick your arm up there and pick them because no good being seven foot tall plus. So um, that's kind of what we were learning as well. Technique, so lots of trees to, to green, which is fantastic. I'm trying to get interesting pictures though in the winter, it's quite difficult. Sunshine. <laughs> yes, sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, this was Richard that did it, so it wasn't. It was an expert, so it'd be really interesting <laughs> to go and see what that looks like. He's taken the nice tree and wrecked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so just very, very quickly, the third part of the project is looking at setting up the food network. So, um, again, across Wiltrum and Swindon, it's a very big area, kind of geographically and um, kind of divided. Um, and so we thought it was better to work with local groups and luckily Stan kind of came on board with this as well um, to focus one around well, uh, to focus one around Swindon um, and to work very closely with Stan to set up a network and again very much directed by people that are interested and who, you know, people here tonight or going down the line trying to engage with other um, members of the public but for example, between Jerry and I, we kind of came up with a short list of some of the ideas that we thought might be useful activity to, for us to, to look at. So for example, um, like a food directory for the town. I know there was one done in the past, but maybe that could be updated. Um, again, there's lots of good projects going on in Swindon already, um, and some people know about them, other people aren't as familiar. Um, and how do we network and strengthen some of those? Um, being able to increase some of the opportunities as well for learning in different places for people and how they can grow and also access um, healthy local food. Um, there's an issue around access to land as well, and there's problems with getting into allotments and that kind of thing. Um, and a big idea in the future potentially is looking at a local food strategy for um, Swindon as well. So that's just some ideas thrown out in there, and that's very quick whiz. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> that's great, Sarah. Thank you.